Like chicks in a nest, social media companies clamour for our attention with their emails, notifications and beeps. These come in two varieties. Notifications that encourage you to create more content. You had no new likes this week. Share updates about yourself and friends by creating a new post or video. And notifications that encourage you to go and visit the site. Your post has been liked. You were tagged in a photo. You have been mentioned. Birthday reminders. There's an event happening near you. Someone viewed your profile. Here are tweets that might be of interest to you. The notifications and emails never tell you the full story. They're designed to provoke your interest so that you follow the link to the social media site and there you are subjected to more advertisements and the tills ring. ka -ching. At level two, we're looking at artificial intelligence and more specifically machine learning. These tools review the large amounts of data that us users post on social media sites and they have the ability to decipher these data and gain an understanding of what is being said. Here we use a branch of machine learning called sentiment analysis, a process that uses natural language processing, NLP, and machine learning to pair social media data with predefined labels such as positive, negative, or neutral. In this way, machines can develop agents that learn to understand the opinions and emotions underlying the messages. We are asked to help in this process by adding the emoticons. These help the sentiment analysis tools better understand the nature of our messages, particularly in the areas of humour and sarcasm, which are concepts AI machines find difficult to understand. So by using emoticons, we are, in effect, training the AI engines. Having analysed all the data that we, the users, have posted, what do the social media companies do with it? Well, at level two, they do the following. They populate social media recommendation engines. The recommendation engines collect data on the content you engage with, from pinning a picture on Pinterest to commenting on an Instagram post, and then they display material that they anticipate you will enjoy. This material can be either targeted advertising or other people's posts that are perceived to be relevant. The recommendation engines collect information relating to the content you post, the content you review and click on, and the number of likes you put on certain posts. And in this way, they can deduce your personality. Facial recognition technology is used to identify people in photographs. You may have seen on Facebook that when you post a group photo, many of the faces, if not all of them, will be identified and automatically tagged. You can then enhance the knowledge base by clicking on the check-in icon, and in this way, you can tell Facebook that all these people were in this location at this time. This then feeds the machine learning programs with more information on the preferences of the individuals. LinkedIn has two facets, a social media platform, Facebook for corporate workers, which uses its recommendation engine to suggest people that you might like to connect with. But it makes its money from recruiters seeking talent. As a user, you have kindly updated your career history and skills, and LinkedIn uses an AI tool from recently acquired Bright to perform intelligent matches for both employers and job seekers. It takes into account the user's hiring patterns, work experience, and similarities in job descriptions. ka -ching, money for LinkedIn. YouTube is particularly adept at analysing your usage patterns and making recommendations for what you should look at next. These are designed to tempt you down rabbit holes so that you continue watching videos and in so doing, you're subjected to more advertisements. ka -ching again. National laws run way behind the environments that technology companies are creating. Social media companies are commercial organisations and are driven by the pursuit of profit. Therefore, they are not incentivized to regulate themselves. This leads to, at best, a degree of negligence in reviewing the content that they publish. Unregulated self-published content is causing increasing concern. Imperial College London published a report in The Lancet outlining the harm caused to teenagers by cyberbullying. Teen suicides and self-harm have dramatically increased over recent years. 
there is evidence that supports a link with social media. YouTube, Instagram and Snapchat are the most common social media platforms for teens. In a study by researchers at the UCLA Brain Mapping Centre, they found that certain regions of teen brains became activated by likes on social media, sometimes causing them to want to use social media more. Researchers believe social media can be associated with the intensification of the symptoms of depression. The Harvard Graduate School of Education has posted a research story entitled Social Media and Teen Anxiety, with anxiety being triggered by seeing people posting about events to which they haven't been invited, feeling pressure to post positive and attractive content about yourself, feeling pressure to get comments and likes on your posts and having someone post things about you that you can't change or control. Just take a moment and think, do you recognise any of these behaviours in yourself? Can you control your addictions? One of the most compelling features of social media is that it responds to your choices and so adapts to suit your preferences. There are two groups of people that call their customers users. One is the technology companies and the other is drug dealers. Now let's move to level three, where we look at the less obvious behavior patterns facilitated by social media companies. Magicians are able to use misdirection because our brain automatically categorizes people's motions by interpreting their intentions. We see somebody push their spectacles up the bridge of their nose and assume that their glasses have slipped, but the magician uses this motion to hide something in their mouth. Similarly, whilst we're being distracted by the posts, photos and friendly surveys we partake in, we are being misdirected away from what is happening beneath the surface. The threat from artificial intelligence is not taking the shape of Terminators being managed by Skynet. It is much closer to the Matrix, where we are living in an artificially constructed reality. By this I mean that the view we have of the world is through our computers and mobile devices – and the information we receive is being filtered by AI engines. These are regulating the news articles that we see, which of our friends' posts we see, and the advertisements in our news feeds. A recent Pew survey found almost 60% of us regularly use social media for our news. But we are complicit in constructing our artificial world by creating a confirmation bias. By this, I mean... When it comes to controversial topics, including politics, if you're like most people, the majority of your friends and followers on social media probably share your outlook. This means that the vast majority of tweets, Facebook posts, pins or other content you read on these sites tend to express the same point of view as your own. Here are some July 2020 figures. World population 7.8 billion. Unique mobile phone users 5.2 billion. Internet users, 4.6 billion. Active social media users, 4 billion. Social media companies have unprecedented audiences. Facebook, YouTube and WhatsApp dominate the league table. Twitter clearly punches above its weight with a comparatively small 326 million. This creates a lot of influence. Any advertiser will tell you the most powerful form of advertising is word of mouth. We believe what our friends tell us. Social media provides a vehicle for forwarding and liking messages so that they become word of mouth endorsements. Because social media sites provide the vehicle for self-publication, there's no verification of the content. This leads to fake news. And we have a natural bias towards false and potentially more exciting information. In 2018, an MIT study showed that fake news on Twitter travels six times faster than the truth. Each person with marginal views can see that they're not alone. And when these people are introduced to each other on social media, they collaborate and share information. Here are a couple of examples where social media postings have been interpreted as genuine news. Pizzagate. Here, conspiracy theorists falsely claimed in posts made on social media that a number of emails linked high-ranking Democratic Party officials with an alleged human trafficking and child sex ring managed out of the Comet Ping Pong Pizzeria in Washington, D.C. 
A man from North Carolina believed these stories to be true and went to the Comet Ping Pong armed with a rifle which he fired inside the restaurant in the belief he was there to rescue children. The restaurant owner and staff received death threats from other conspiracy theorists. In Myanmar, previously known as Burma, on the evening of July 2014, a mob of hundreds of angry residents gathered around the Sun Tea Shop in the commercial hub of Mandalay, Myanmar's second largest city. The tea shop's Muslim owner had been accused falsely of misdeeds against a female Buddhist employee. The accusations against him, originally reported on a blog, exploded when they made their way to Facebook. Is Facebook complicit in these events? Well, certainly, they allowed false accusations to be published. But to be fair, that's simply what they do and the way their algorithms work. Their AI tools identified the nature of the posts and directed them to people showing similar interests. And so Facebook became the wind behind the fire. You may think handing decisions over to a machine would remove any human bias. Overtly, tech companies are politically correct and do not display any segregation or discrimination. However, their machine learning algorithms do have a covert bias. It is what they're designed to do. They categorise people and make decisions based on these categorizations. An example is that social media facial recognition algorithms do not work well on people with dark complexions. And the reason is that this group were underrepresented in the machine learning stages of the algorithm's development. Our perception doesn't always match reality. Here are some examples from surveys. People in Saudi Arabia were asked, What proportion of the population do you think is obese? Respondents replied, 25%. It's actually 75%. People in the UK were asked, What percentage of the population do you think is Muslim? They answered, 24%. It's actually 5%. People in Japan were asked, What percentage of the population live in rural areas? They answered 56%. It's actually 7%. Our perceptions affect our behaviour, perhaps even our voting preferences. In 2010, Facebook conducted an experiment by randomly deploying a non-partisan I voted button into 61 million feeds during the US midterm elections. That simple action led to an additional 340,000 votes a number that could swing an election. Facebook had shown itself to be an influencer. The Chinese government is cited as being particularly prolific in the creation of false accounts and paying people to broadcast pro-government messages with the intention of changing their perceptions. In September 2019, Twitter removed over 900 accounts it believed were established by the Chinese government, which were deliberately and specifically attempting to sow political discord. In May 2020, the BBC reported that hundreds of fake or hijacked social media accounts have been pushing pro-Chinese government messages about the coronavirus pandemic onto Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. These were attributed to the Chinese regime's 50 Cent Army. These are hired professional trolls and the nickname suggests how much they get paid per post. Micro-targeting is a marketing strategy that uses people's data, what they like, what they're connected to, what their demographics are, so that they can be segmented into small groups for content targeting. Leading up to elections, detailed micro-targeting has been used to target voters. The Institute of Practitioners in Advertising, the IPA, has called for a suspension of micro-targeting ads in political campaigns due to the covert, secret nature of these ads that do not have to be listed for public display like other political advertising. It creates a culture that lacks openness and can be vulnerable to abuse. With the US 2020 election looming, Twitter announced, We will not permit our service to be abused around civic processes. Most importantly, elections. Any attempt to do so, both foreign and domestic, will be met with strict enforcement of our rules. Twitter also banned political ads and deep fakes. While the act of faking content is not new, 
Deepfakes leverage powerful techniques from machine learning and artificial intelligence to manipulate or generate visual and audio content with a high potential to deceive. Uh, and an entertaining example that springs to mind is the fabricated footage of Forrest Gump talking to John F. Kennedy. Level 4 is evolving, but it's here. And at this deep level, it is where the vast amounts of data collected from around our planet are used to perform predictive analysis. The software mines and analyzes historical data patterns to predict future outcomes by extracting information from data sets to determine likely outcomes. Many of our decisions are not based on logic. Rather, emotions, trust, intuition, satisfaction and culture all play a crucial role in persuading us to buy a certain product or make a particular decision. This provides the opportunity to, say, commission a social media company to predict the voting patterns from an election manifesto. The manifesto could then be reworked so that it derives the most positive results and the analysis could also identify the key messages to be conveyed to particular social groups. I do hope we don't reach the next level, which is where social media companies are commissioned to change the beliefs of populations by manipulating the information we receive, and so change our beliefs to order. So in conclusion, I would say that during the lockdown periods for COVID-19, there has been a significant increase in online activity. Social interaction is part of our DNA, and so social networking is here for the foreseeable future. When cars were first introduced to our highways, they featured body-damaging vertical shapes with sharp metal emblems. They were a new concept, and it took some years of public pressure to change the laws and make the cars safer. Changes included having gently sloping fronts with collapsible bumpers and outlawing those fixed protruding bonnet emblems and also fitting airbags. Social media is a powerful and rapidly evolving communications vehicle. We cannot put the genie back in the bottle, but we must learn to manage it better.